Hey folks, in this video, I'm talking about how to use this Lewis dot structure in structure interactive document. So let's talk about how to do that. So um, for each tab inside of here, you're going to create a different structure um, for a molecule, and that molecule is going to be given to you here. So here we're making PDR3 or phosphorus tribromide. Tri well, bromide. I can't say words good. Sorry. Anyway, um, first question is over here. And so we have different questions or prompts in light blue, and we're going to respond to those in the red section or else on our drawing area. So we want to know how many valence electrons does each element in this molecule have? Well, we've got phosphorus and bromine. I can use the periodic table to identify that phosphorus has five valence electrons and that bromine has, mm, mm, let me think, seven valence electrons. And I know that because of which group they are in. Who cool means? <clears throat> well, next question. That one was easy. What is the total number of valence electrons in the molecule just for charge? Well, there is no charge here, so I'm going to ignore that right now. But I'm going to add up the valence electrons from each element, and I'm going to count for how many of those elements are there. So I can look down here and think, all right, each bromine gives me 7. So that's 7 plus 7 plus 7 is 21. And the phosphorus gives me 5. So the 21 plus 5 gives me 26 valence electrons total. If there were a charge, I would have to change that. If there's a negative charge, that means there's more electrons because electrons are negatively charged. And if there were a positive charge on this molecule, well, I'd have to remove from this pool of valence electrons because of positive charge, there are less electrons. All right, cool beans. Well, I want to place the element with the lowest electronegativity in the center of my molecule. And I'm going to connect all the other elements to that. Well, all right, electronegativity um, decreases as we move across a period from left to right. And bromine is further right in the same period as phosphorus. So bromine has a higher electronegativity. So phosphorus has a lower electronegativity. So I'm going to click and drag my phosphorus, and I'm going to move it to the middle of my element or my drawing area. And I'll move my bromines to be around it. It doesn't matter terribly where I put these bromines. I could put this guy here. I could put it up top. I'll put it up top. Why not? Um, okay, cool. And then I want to connect all of the elements with a single bond. I should phrase that better, but I'm going to connect, connect all of these terminal elements to the central atom with a single bond. So I'll click and drag one of these guys and put it in between there. And I'll click and drag this guy and put it in between there. And I'll click and drag this guy and put it in between there. You can notice that each one of these bonds has two dots on the end. Those two dots represent two electrons because each single bond is, uses two electrons. So right now, I've used one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. I have to use all 26 electrons to draw this. So how many electrons remain in my pool of drawing? Well, I used six. So 26 minus six gives me, I have 20 electrons left to use. I can double click on the line or just above it to get my drawing or to enter a text. All right, cool. Well, I want to add lone pairs of electrons to the terminal atoms until they all have octets, except I'm not going to do that for hydrogen. Hydrogen gets one bond. It's good to go. Um, um, and I, so I want to do this until, yeah, they all have octets or until I run out of electrons. So I'm going to use my lone pairs. These are these bubers over here. And I'm going to drag them around my bromines until they have an octet. So this bromine and each of these bromines already has a bond. And it gets you count the electrons that it is using for bonding. So there are one, two electrons used for bonding. This bromine already can, that, that counts as having two electrons. So it only needs six more electrons to have an ace octet. Cool beans. So I can give it one, two, three, four, five, six electrons or three lone pairs. Now it's got a cool octet. And I'll do the same thing to my others. And I should just check in my head beforehand, am I going to have enough electrons for that? If I use six here, I'll use six here, I'll use six here. That's 18. I have 20 electrons remaining. So I can totally give all these bromines nice octets. So I'll just keep click and dragging because there is a nice deep stack of these uh, <laughs> lone pairs sitting here. I should not have to worry about using them all up. And I will just click and drag and move them over to my bromines until all of them have an octet. Uh, this guy's a little ugly, but I don't really care. What else? Um, so I think I've completed that step. Yeah, I gave all of my terminal atoms, the ones on the outside, octets. And how many electrons remain? Well, I said I used 18 and 20 minus 18 is going to give me two electrons remaining. Nice. Um, so I want to go on to the next step and add the remaining electrons, two, to the central atom as lone pairs. Um, all right, cool. So take this lone pair. I only got two electrons left, and I'll put it on my phosphorus. Next step. Um, this is only if the central atom doesn't have an octet. So let's check. Does phosphorus have an octet here? Well, let's see. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in bonds, and I have seven, eight electrons. If you count this lone pair, that's an octet. Sick. This looks like a good molecule. But we should still go through the rest of this step just in case. So let's fudge this drawing a little bit. Let's pretend we didn't have this lone pair. And let's panic. 
<clears throat> because phosphorus doesn't have an octet. Actually, let's not panic because we'll just follow the step and it'll be fine. So we're going to create multiple bonds. Um, what does that mean? Well, we're going to remove a lone pair of electrons from one of these terminal atoms. Since they're all bromines and kind of the same, it doesn't matter which. I'll pick you because you're, uh, you're dangerously out of the mix. Um, so I removed that, and I'm going to add a double or triple bond if I remove multiple pairs. I'm going to add a double bond in this case to the central atom. So I took out two electrons. I know I need two electrons for a bond, so I could just add another bond in here. Oh my gosh, that's pretty cool now. Let's think about it. So this bromine is still happy. It's got one, two, three, four electrons from bonding and one, two, three, four of lone pairs. That's eight. It stayed the same. Nice octet. But my phosphorus now, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons from bonding. It has a chill octet and looks good. So that's how we would go about making double bonds, even though we didn't really need to for this molecule. Anywho, that's the end of this here video. Um, Yeah, I hope you understand how to use this document and how to draw yourself some Lewis.